Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to take and create a small eyeball punch. Now you can upscale this in any size that you'd like, but we're for our details and what we're working at, we're gonna take and work on the smallest of the sizes uh, that I will list in the description down below. So this is part of an entire series that I am doing around some tooling or short tooling like this. And if you guys haven't seen the videos on these, uh, you may want to go check back and watch those. Those will be linked up in the description down below by the time this video comes out. But basically you need to take and make yourself a ball punch that is just simply making it to the diameter that you need the ball to be and then grinding it smooth to a mostly round shape. You don't have to worry about this being perfectly round. Some of the surface tension of the metal will help it be perfectly round when you make your depression. Now you need to make a depression in another piece of steel in order to have an eyeball punch. And then we'll grind down the edges because this is kind of a bit of a beveling effect. Now this isn't quite an eyeball punch that you would see in ironwork as far as making animal heads and things like that. This is a different, uh, it's more of a concaved punch, round ball punch, and it's made for decorative ironwork, whether it's to set rivets. This particular style I'm making to actually uh, create bosses in the middle of the bar for rosettes and things of that nature. So uh, you guys can check out a video that I just did recently on forging decorative rosettes. I'll link it right here and also put it down in the description down below. So the big trick to this is we want to get one end nice and hot. I've got a piece that is two and a half inches long, one inch round, piece of high carbon steel. I'm going to flip it up and hold it between my legs here. I'm going to find the center of this piece and we're just going to give it a good hard smack. You want to come down as evenly on it as you can and create a really nice round depression. Now this is going to be a very simple, quick tool to make. And there you go. So it's that simple. So you need to create one tool in order to create the other tool. This is your positive. This creates the negative. And then now this negative can create positives. Now, if you leave this just like this, you've created yourself a rivet set tool. So you could head a rivet with this piece, which is also a very effective thing to take and have in your arsenal. But we, however, are going to be turning this into, again, an eyeball punch tool. So we're gonna do a little bit more to it. Now we need to take and create a groove around it. So this way it will be able to be held by these tooling tongs. That's what we will be working on now, is making a groove or a channel around the top end of this piece so it can be held nice and easily. So I'm gonna heat this piece back up and I'll reset the camera up and we will be over at uh, my swedge block that has my guillotine dies in it. So we have this piece nice and hot. We're going to set it on our guillotine tool here and leave about a half an inch or so, or 12 mil, right to the top side. That'll give us a sufficient striking space. And we're just going to rotate this ever so lightly as we go around. back and forth, create as clean a groove as we can. Got my tongs there. Now we're gonna check the tongs for fit check this groove. It's always good to have your tongs made up first so you can check it for fit. It needs to go a little bit more. So I'll put that back in there.
Now this is a little too dark of a heat to actually be working this piece, but we're gonna do it that way just for sake of time in this video. So there we go, that fits very nicely. So now we can grip that piece nice and even. So the next step in this process, we're gonna let this anneal or just normalize. Uh, it's a piece of 1084 for people who are wondering what type of steel that is. We're gonna let this air cool down and then we will go over and we will grind this little piece here and then onto the hardening and tempering. So here's another piece that I've done earlier. This is a slightly larger size. While that other one is cooling down, I like to take and grind on the ones that I've already have available, which is like here. I've got all these already previously made up. So I'm just gonna grind one of these and take and show you how to do it. So basically to turn this into a bit of a butcher uh, die, you, the angle's not super critical. You can do a 45 degree angle. Uh, you can do a 60 degree angle or you can do a 30 degree angle depending on how hot the material it is that you're going to be work, working with. I suggest that you take and work with a 60 degree angle would be best even if you're doing hot chisel work. Say, um, you know, even if you're doing the hot chisel work with this piece, uh, it's a most use of, it's the most versatile angle. Uh, you know, if it's too sharp of an angle, the edge won't hold up and it'll roll over. If it's too blunt of an angle, yeah, you know, it's going to fight you going through the piece. So I go with the 60 degree angle. A good happy medium is you can do 45 if you don't like to do the 60. But we're going to go ahead and do a 60 degree bevel all the way around this piece. Um, obviously, you'll want to do this on a flat palatin if you can on a ang uh, belt grinder or use an angle grinder to establish those. This, I just happened to have this, uh, basically I lost one of these wheels, it ran out on me, I threw a bearing. So I just rotate it so this way I could get back into work until the part comes in for my belt grinder. So we're gonna grind that first, and then we're gonna take off all the sharp corners on this and slightly crown the back end of this tool. So now I hope you guys can see the advantages of this 
a little bit. So we were just holding it and letting it take, and take its own course, working it back and forth until we didn't see any more shouldering up near the eye. And again, we've got, we've established what is about a 60 degree angle and we kind of alleviated off that sharp edge out the edge. And then this is what we came up with for the rear end of the tool. Now this piece here is ready to be heat treated. I'm going to do a, an entire video on heat treating once all these tools are done. I have a whole bunch of them at once and I figured instead of wasting a bunch of people's time watching uh, the same heat treat again and again and again, I would just show you how I batch heat treat all of these tools in one singular video in this uh, you know, tooling playlist. So be on the lookout for that video in the future. Thank you guys for watching this video. Let me know what you thought in the comment section down below. And if you'd like to take and support what we do here at Christ Center I Works, just share this video around with your friends. If you'd like to take and uh, so be a sponsor of this content that we take and produce here at Christ Center Iron Works, consider checking out one of our mini ebooks or digital downloads over at, over at blacksmithpdfs.com. So without further ado, God bless you all, and I'm going to get back to forging. We'll catch you on the next one.